Hello, welcome everybody. This is Martin at SwishEmbedded.com and in this video I will show you how to use shared mutexes and shared conditional variables in pthreads. So the reason that you would want to use a shared mutex is, for example, if you uh, copy your process or you have two processes that need to uh, that need to access a resource uh, which is shared and they need to access the same uh, the same locking variables uh, that uh, the other process is accessing as well in order to make sure that the that the mutual exclusion is actually working and so the way we do that is by mapping the memory of the of, of the mutex and the conditional variable uh, we can actually map the whole uh, the whole context um, and make it shared as well uh, and we we use memory map mmap system call in Linux to map that area, and we also use uh, attributes for our mutex and our conditional variable, uh, because if we don't use attributes uh, and if we don't set the p shared attributes to process shared, then our mutex is not going to work across process boundaries. So um, how do we actually do this in practice? Uh, let's have a look at some code and uh, I'll walk you through it line by line and explain to you exactly what it does. So we have an example here, which I'm going to be using in my uh, course on pthreads at switchbed.com. And um, I'm not yet done with this example, but um, I'm just going to talk about the uh, about the, the way that you can create the shared uh, the shared object. Uh, because that's that's the most important thing for this video. So let's um, let's go and start looking at this. So for example, uh, first of all, we need to include the right files. We need to uh, we're going to be using POSIX threads, so we include pthread. We are going to be using standard library functions. We are also going to be using uh, memory manager, so we include uh, system mman, and we are also going to be using uh, wait pid in order to wait for the child process. Uh, so we need to include system wait uh, dot h, and we're also going to be using the standard uh, file functions such as open, not f open, which is uh, defined in the C library. But we're going to be using the the raw open uh, open system call, uh, and for that we need to include fc and tl. Uh, then we define our context. This is going to be our shared context. <clears throat> in this context, we're going to have a uh, a mutex and a conditional variable. And we're also going to have a flag which is uh, going to signal that, uh, which is which we're going to sig signal from the child process to signal the parent process that uh, the child is done. So um, uh, we then define uh, a couple of functions here. So we have uh, <clears throat> we have our initialization code for uh, for the context, and um, actually these ones uh, do need to be commented out for now. Uh, so let's just comment them out so I don't confuse you here so um, uh, first of all we're gonna we're gonna set the the p shared attribute of the mutex to process shared so that this mutex uh, can be locked and unlocked across um, by different processes uh, and uh, we are also uh, gonna create a conditional variable here and we're gonna create attributes uh, cond atter uh, structure we're gonna init that structure and we're gonna set p shared in the structure as well and uh, with both uh, attributes both for the mutex and for the conditional variable we have to call mutex atter destroy and cond atter destroy uh, respectively uh, because uh, this frees resources if there are any resources allocated basically by the init call uh, this uh, call is gonna free those resources so um, then we have a couple of other functions here. We have uh, our wait ready and we have our signal ready. And uh, we're going to call wait ready from one process and we're going to call signal ready from another process and uh, signal the first process that we are ready. Uh, so the way that we wait for, um, for the signal is we lock the mutex we enter into a loop if you have seen my video on conditional variables you will know that uh, we have to lock the mutex first then we check our predicate our uh, our flag um, and uh, then we call uh, cond wait on this conditional variable and we pass also the the mutex lock so when we call this function uh, our mutex is actually going to be unlocked and our process is going to go to sleep until the conditional variable uh, ready is signaled uh, so when we are uh, sitting here and waiting, our mutex is unlocked. Now, when this conditional variable is signaled, then this cond wait is going to lock the mutex again, uh, exit, 
and we're going to test the predicate and if it's actually set to ready then we exit this loop we unlock the mutex uh, because now it's locked when we exit this function so we unlock it and then we exit our wait ready function now uh, the cond wait can actually return if uh, if the program receives a signal uh, so it's not uh, a 100 percent guarantee that that it's actually a signal uh, that has been uh, that has been sent uh, to signal that we are ready. So we have to check the predicate. We have to have actually another variable such as is ready in this case in order to um, in order to be 100% sure that this is the signal that we have been uh, that we have caught using the conditional uh, conditional weight. Uh, in our signal uh, function we just lock the mutex. We set our is ready to one and we signal the conditional variable ready uh, and then we unlock the mutex. So uh, these two functions are going to be called from different processes. Uh, we have uh, this thread function is not going to be used for now, so it's just a dummy. Um, we then uh, go into the main function, and here we're actually going to create our memory mapped region, and we're going to uh, share this region through a file. So um, uh, in Linux, a very uh, good way of sharing objects is through files, because then you can uh, then you kind of have this this endpoint to which your memory is attached. You're not attaching to any specific address. You're attaching to a file, uh, and since a file is unique in the file system, uh, it works really well to to attach to a file. So we create uh, we create a file called mmap, uh, and this is actually going to be a, an actual real file. So if we uh, list this, we can see that that file is created there, and it has the T option there. Uh, so uh, we create this file with uh, read write attributes and we create it, we also create it if it doesn't exist so that's what uh, o create uh, attribute is set for um, we then have to allocate the space in this file so if you don't allocate the space you cannot uh, when when you write the memory from uh, through through this this mapped region when you write to that memory uh, you are not, the, the the mapped the the memory mapping code cannot uh, increase the size of the file so you're going to get a bus error if you not if you don't have enough space in the file so we have to allocate the space in the file and we're actually going to be writing to this file for example uh, if i show you what this file looks like um, you can you can kind of see that this this contains the data that is going to be shared between processes and this file is actually left there so it's like uh, it, it's uh, it's an actual it's an actual data storage for the shared data um, so um, normally we would really want to delete this file at the end of the application we can actually do that we can actually unlink this file later uh, but um, let's go back to the code here and uh, the next thing we do after we have allocated the uh, the space inside the file we memory map this file uh, to a memory mapped region so we call mmap it's a system call in Linux and uh, mmap is going to return a pointer to the map memory so what what's going to happen essentially is that the kernel is going to map this memory into the address space of our process and because we are not uh, specifying any address as a hint here we, we put null uh, as the first argument uh, the the address is going to be just any address which is uh, which is free so um uh and yeah and there is uh, there is a uh, sort of it's going to be in a specific range but it's going to be just a random address so uh and then we specify also the size of this memory mapped region we uh specify the the flags uh which are we want to be able to read and write this region and we also specify that this is a shared map um we have to specify map shared in order to uh in order for this to be a shared region so we can share it between processes uh, we then also uh, we then also uh, attach this region to our file which we have created here. So uh, once this returns, if it returns minus one, then it's invalid. But if it doesn't return minus one, it's going to return the the actual uh, memory mapped uh, the address of the memory mapped region. So uh, we can directly just assign to our context. So then we call context init uh, on this shared uh, on this this shared uh, region, and we're gonna we do this once. So we 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 haven't yet copied the process. We haven't yet forked. So we do this once. We do initialization of this object once, and after that, uh, after that, we fork the process. And uh, when you do a fork, uh, all of the memories basically um, you you get a new process. You get the same memory. It's actually it's actually the same memory. 
until you write to it. So it's Linux is actually very smart when it comes to copying processes. It can it can reuse the same memory if it's read only memory. Um, so um, you, you're actually going to have the same memory until you write to it, and then it's kind of happening seamlessly under the um, under the hood. Uh, Linux takes care of it. Um, so you get uh, when you call fork, you get uh, you get a copy of the process. And you can tell from the return value of the uh, of the call to fork which uh, if you're in the parent process or if you're in the child process, and uh, all the uh, all the file descriptors are inherited uh, or shared between the the processes. They they get the copy of the whole memory, so they get the file descriptors, they get the uh, the mapped regions. Uh, but now you have two processes. So if it uh, returns uh, if it's not a zero, uh, if the return is not a zero, then we get the process ID of the child process. Uh, so we are in the parent process essentially, uh, and uh, in the parent we uh, call wait ready to wait for the uh, to wait for the signal uh, in our uh, in our context, and uh, then once we have uh, received the signal, we also wait for the child to exit, uh, and this is this is good thing to do because uh, you want to essentially know if the child has actually exited. Um, and once we have, uh, once the child has exited, we uh, then exit the parent. And if this PID is uh, zero, then we are in the child, so we signal, we call context signal ready. Now, because these functions are uh, acting on a memory map to, uh, on a memory mapped area, uh, they are gonna, uh, the, the two processes are gonna share that, that memory. So uh, we have essentially implemented uh, inter-process communication uh, using this uh, mapped region. And then, uh, and then we join with the thread. In this case, it doesn't really do anything, uh, and that's and that's basically it. Now, uh, let's have a look at what happens uh, when we actually run this. So uh, let's let's go to this um, uh, to my directory there, and uh, yeah, all right. So let's just comment this out so that we don't get any weirdness happening there. Um, all right. I have all the warnings enabled, so let's do like this. Just so we don't get any warnings. Uh, so, uh, in this case it works really well. Uh, you get a child finishes first, uh, then we have parent done, and then uh, you can you can kind of see the, the both process uh, prints the all threads done. If we were to not uh, specify the shared attribute, um, so if we go back to uh, to our uh, to our program here, if we run the program, we are now sitting there waiting for uh, for the signal. So we are essentially sitting. We, we can see the child has completed, but we are sitting in the parent and we are waiting for the conditional variable. Uh, and this is because we haven't shared the conditional variable, so uh, it's uh, it's not working properly across process boundaries. We we have we still have a copy. Um, of of the um, uh, of the conditional variable uh, in the in two processes, they 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 have a memory that is uh, that is local to the to the threads or to the processes, um, and um, if we uh, if we re if we uncomment this line, then everything works fine. So what else uh, what else uh, can we do here? I'm going to go over the the priorities uh, for for mutexes. You can actually make sure that uh, you can actually have control over how priority is um, handled between threads. You can have mutexes that have um, that have error checking enabled, so that if you if you have a thread that locks a mutex and then uh, crashes, you can uh, detect that that has happened and uh, avoid a deadlock. Uh, but th those are special attributes that you can set for a mutex object in pthreads. Uh, and they are very useful uh, if you want to make your application more robust. So uh, that's it for this video. And uh, thank you for watching. Uh, do go to um, our Discord. You can go to swedishembedded.com slash community and join the Discord. Uh, and you can ask questions there. The Discord is a, is a free resource. We have uh, embedded engineers uh, on the Discord that can help you. And I can help you as well if you, if you have any questions about my videos. So thank you for watching. And I'll see you later. Thanks. Bye.